Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to the wrap-up. Um, it took about uh, four straight hours of cleaning and scrubbing. Well, not straight. Two yesterday and two today, this morning early, to clean up the findings from yesterday's adventure. Um, what I'm going to do is pan back and just give you an overview of everything that I found and brought home. Then I'll talk about each piece or, or each group and uh, give you some pointers and things. So here we have a focus of just a little pretty chunk of geode that I found that generally, you know, some people would just leave and discard in the creek, but I brought it home, polished it up, and uh, I'm very happy with it. I think it's quite pretty. And uh, I'll hold it up so you get to see it sparkle a little bit. See? I can't leave sparklers behind. They're just too pretty. They should come home and decorate. So, okay, let me pan back here. And uh, we'll get down to the brass tacks. The green apples are present for scale so that you understand the size of things. So that's some of the better pieces that were discovered yesterday. Then I'm going to come over here, and I'm first going to talk about all this over here. So all of this, these are the geodes. You're going to be wandering around in creeks, perhaps, especially if you come to Indiana, and you're going to find a whole lot of this stuff. Sometimes you find prettier ones. These are kind of uh, crunchy, what I call crunchy. Uh, for some reason, the minerals in that creek have a lot of iron, uh, wherever they're coming from and rolling out of the banks uh, due to flooding, and then they wash down the creeks. So you get a lot of this crunchy kind of stuff happening. Uh, but just to show you the size variance of, of uh, geodes, you know, you can find them small, you can find them large. Uh, the large ones, you want them hollow if you can figure out what hollow is. Um, these are pretty solid, but you just have to keep picking stuff up. Now, of all of these, this one appears to be the heaviest. So it's probably solid all the way through. And uh, you just have to, you know, get at it, learn how they work to pick out one that's a little different than others. So what is this? This is a giant crinoid head, uh, crown top, they call it. Um, let's see, another one probably, but I'm not really sure on this one. Yeah, this is, this is one for sure right here. So you see this, you can see, if you could take a marker and make a sign, you could see, like, here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. It, it's got five points. It's a five-pointed star. So the stem attached right there, and let's see if I can find a stem of any size to make that sense of that. So I'll come down and you can see what I mean by that. That's where the stem went in. Okay? Now to prove that, I am I just realized I think I'm missing a piece, but uh, I'll show you this one first. So this is the top of a crinoid, probably the plant and the flower that was on top, and there's the stem. Yeah, I don't know. I had a small piece. I'll have to locate him. I don't know where I put the, the little small guy. Oh, here he is. He's, he's hiding. So here's one with the stem. Check it out. Pretty neat. This was one of my favorite finds yesterday. I'll get closer to the light. It's hard to see in this light. It's very dark today. We're having rain. Okay, so you see it. Turn it around so you can get a closer look. Sorry about that. So that's really cool. I have never found one with the original stem attached. So that was a huge find for me. And how I saw it, I wish I got it on film. It was just stuck in the mud and that much was sticking out. And I thought, what the heck is that? And I pulled it out and realized what it was. Very neat piece. Never found another like it. So, so there you go. So now, when you're wandering, you're going to find geodes like this. And this is, this is another top to a crinoid. You're going to find that. You're going to find these. Now, I don't know what these are. I 
you know, you just give them a term, lumpy. Could be a crinoid head that was flattened in the mud and in the uh, stress of, of soil, but uh, we don't really know. You know, you'll find stuff like that. And you have to decide, do you, does it come home or doesn't it? These things weigh a lot. So you might want to, you know, make a decision on what you carry out. Now, I didn't film this, but on the way home after I left the creek, I drove north from where I was and found a road cut that the workers are working on with red clay. And I went and just checked it out and came up with some interesting geodes, crunchy things that maybe later I can break open and see what's inside. So here's another one that may clean up a little better. I haven't cleaned the large ones yet, but I like the fact that it's got that white shaving cream stuff on it. And I'm hoping that if I soak this for a couple days, it might actually clean up a little better. All right, so there are the big geodes. I'm not going to talk much more about that. Let's move on. Um, shapes. You're going to find some interesting shapes when you're out there. So here's one I call the uh, cheddar cheese cheeseburger. One of my favorite shapes when I'm out there in the creek I look for. You'll find them. And here's another one called sunny side up. I do not know what these things are. I just know that they're pretty fun to, to find. So there's a couple of the interesting characters. Another one that's kind of kind of interesting. I don't know. No idea. So make a little pile there. Um, okay, so we did the big crinoid head, so we'll get him out of there. Bring the apple over. All right, now we're going to talk crinoids here. So I did get this on video, but it was quite dirty. This is the, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the rock is, but you can see that there are crinoids right there and right there, uh, there, there, and there are others. So it's a, that's a pretty neat, neat piece. So I like that piece a lot. This is just some of the smaller individual stems. I'll go down and show you. This piece right here is actually, um, this is actually a piece of horn coral. You're seeing the tip end of the horn coral. So it's really broken up, but uh, a few stems and segment pieces, what they call Cheerios out here. So you also walk along and you might find them stuck in sandstone. So here's a couple examples of that. I like this one a lot. This one, it's nice, but it probably won't stay in the collection. I haven't made a decision yet with all of this, everything that's going to go into the real collection inside the house, and the rest of it will go outside. But uh, here's a piece. I think it's crinoid stem, but it's just totally messed up. You know, it's been fossilized and altered and changed. So I don't know. Here's a um, couple more. I like these, the big ones. And uh, this guy, this guy is probably the largest one I have ever found. Which is fascinating to me because that means that spot's going to reveal others and it'll be fun to locate these large ones. I don't have any really large ones in my collection. Everything's kind of about that big, you know, or less. And I have jars of them, but you might get fed up when you're walking around creeks picking up these little guys. It does get tedious, so I'm very careful now. It's got to be a good size one, or most of the time I won't even bother picking them up. All right, um, let's go here. This, this grouping here are geodes that... Um, and just like that, I'm back again. I forgot. I was going to end with a discussion on how to clean all these mucky things when you get them out of the creeks and bring them home. So what I do, I usually fill a metal bowl that I have on the counter, you can see it, with warm to hot water and a pretty strong solution of Ajax, dish soap. But it has a citric acid in it 
and I let them sit. And that'll clean them up. If you let them sit 12 hours, that you'll come back and that water will be murky mud. And, and a lot of times they'll clean right up. But just to show you, there's different varieties of cleaners. These are all cleaners that I use. Sometimes I combine them. Yes, it can get dangerous. You, want, you don't want to breathe when you're combining all these chemicals. Now, the one that works the best on crystals is that. If you find open crystals and you want to clean them out. Now, I don't have to do anything but rinse uh, a geode if it's brand new and open for the first time. Um, and sometimes you'll find very clean ones, like in the case of that guy. I didn't really have to do too, too much. I just used a toothbrush and uh, some apple cider, some apple cider vinegar and some baking soda. The one I do not have here in all my uh, cleaning solutions is baking soda. I just ran out of it uh, this morning using it on all these. So you'll find you're going to spend some money with this hobby on cleaners and such. Um, you know, that's the way it is. The other one that uh, a lot of collectors use is Iron Out. Uh, you can buy that at uh, different places like um, um, Menards and Lowe's. Uh, the other thing that they buy is uh, Lime Away. And uh, the last one is CLR. Um, I try to avoid things that are so strong, like acids of any kind, uh, that are full stream acids. I don't, I don't really particularly care for their use. But you can find oven cleaners that have that same acid in them, and I've used those, and they, and they work out great. So you just want to wear gloves. You want to be careful. You want to be doing this in well vented, ventilated area and such. Um, never ever leave anything that you care about in any of these solutions for longer than an hour uh, unless you're just experimenting. It will take some experimenting. I've ruined a lot of geodes and a lot of other things by just experimenting. Um, it's a lesson learned and you just got to do that until you start becoming an, a little bit more of an expert on these things. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.